Every time I play a Soulsborne, I always start out with a crazy heavy weapon build. Then for my second playthrough, I always go with a Brawler. There's just a unique kind of rush that you get out of a fist weapon run that I don't really feel when I do other builds. The problem that happened whenever I was planning this run in Elden Ring is that the staple fist weapon, the Seistus, isn't available until after you take on the first real challenging boss of the game. Market the foul. So I started shopping around. I guess I must have completely missed it my first playthrough, but From Software gave us Seistus Lovers a golden gift in this game, and it's obtainable, upgradable, and customizable way before taking on Margit. Who there? C come over here, won't you? The Spike Seistus is a fist weapon that accumulates bleed and is obtainable from a merchant who isn't terribly far into the scarlet rotted hellhole that is Kaelid. I'm sure you've seen from other YouTube videos, but bleed builds are ridiculously effective in this game at all levels of play right now. You can count on the effect triggering at least twice in most boss fights, and it's remarkably rare for bosses to be immune to the effect. This isn't the core of this build, but having a weapon that deals bleed this early on is seriously helpful. There's a few problems with getting this thing and actually practically using it. We're gonna have to take a trip over to Kaelin to pick it up, and it's gonna cost us a pretty hefty 4,000 runes to get. However, I'll walk you through how I did it and some other items that'll help you live out your One Punch Man dreams in the lands between. Before we start out though, let me say that if this is your first time playing Elden Ring, I wouldn't farm smithing stones or runes this early on. Let the game be a challenge and savor that feeling of overcoming what seemed like an insurmountable enemy. That's what these games are all about. If you're wanting to play a pugilist and just looking for a nice talisman to accompany this weapon as well, I'd end this video after I get the green turtle talisman and take the time to get familiar with this world, because it's one of those special games we only get once every decade or so. I'm doing this one for my second playthrough, so I've already had that amazing experience and I don't want to deprive anybody else of getting to find a new area and just have that aha moment. When we start the game, our starting class doesn't really matter, but the Vagabond class will give us a great starting lineup of stats that will directly synergize with the weapon that we'll be making this build around. The Samurai or Wretch could be another option, but the Vagabond clearly lines up with the stats that we want and gives us some basic equipment to fight until we get our gloves. None of the keepsakes are necessary for this build, but I'm just going to pick up the Golden Seed. I just really don't recommend getting the Stone Sword Key. These things are so abundant throughout the game, and having an extra charge on our Gatorade early on is way more impactful. We'll need to get a Stone Sword Key to get a Talisman that we want, but if you look at the map I've provided that details my main Journey Start Collectathon, you'll see that there's at least three of them somewhere near you at all times in Limgrave, so we'll pick up the one at Stormhill Shack because it's right on our path. Take time to pick up any maps and touch all the sites of grace along the way. We're going to fill in quite a bit of the southern side of the map doing this. From the starting area, go north to the Church of Ella and take care of all the starting business you need to do there. Next, we're going to beeline it northeast through the wooded area from the Stormgate side of Grace at Gatefront Ruins. Here we'll meet Best Girl and get Torrent. The finger may they serve, but you, I can play the turning wood to aid you. You need only to the foot of If you've already got enough runes to level up, feel free, but saving up 600 can save you for some backtracking on this path. From that side of Grace, head through the barricades of Stormgate to Storm Hill. You'll see an Erd Tree sapling with a new golden seed for us, so grab that and continue up north to Stormhill Shack. Here's where we get the Stone Sword Key we'll be using in just a bit. Go ahead and upgrade your flask and talk to the woman in the shack. We want everyone who only to have that itchy nose. Quite a From there, head northeast on the path to the Warmaster Shack. Here you can use that 600 runes to pick up Ash of War Parry. Our character wants to be attacking as much as possible without worrying about shields, but a vast majority of enemy attacks are parryable. So much so, this is the only weakness you're able to exploit with some bosses and enemies, and I think parry was just an intended part of the melee playstyle. Because of this, we'll pick up the parry ash at the Warmaster Shack, and I'll happily put it on the spike stations for now. After getting the Ash of War, continue down this path past Saint Spurge. On the other side, we'll meet a merchant who sells Smithing Stone 1s. You might make note of them on your map to come back to if you're struggling to find them, but the drop rate for these items has drastically increased in the 1.03 patch. Keep going east on this path until you hit the Summon Water Village outskirts site of Grace. There's a boss in these ruins called the Tibia Mariner. It's possible to take this ferryman on now, but it's not required for anything here. We'll be using our Stone Sword Key on the southeast side of the village to unlock a fog wall for our first talisman, the Green Turtle Talisman. You'll know you're in the right place when you see two dogs roaming around some stairs going underground. 
The green turtle talisman is the Chlorianthi ring in this game, which ups our stamina regen and keeps us constantly dodging and swinging. It's at this point that I'd recommend going south to the Third Church of America to grab the Physic and the Sacred Tear. You can also go to the north of this area to get a Spinning Stone too. I would really recommend that you stay on Torrent because there's a fighting rune bear and a bunch of wolves in this area. For the next few minutes we're going to be getting some items to upgrade your Spike Sastus and get our flask pretty meaty, but if you're just ready to go and grab the Spike Sastus, you can go back northeast. Check the timeline for the Caleb chapter and skip there. After getting the Sacred Tear, head south on the path towards the Mistwood Ruins. Here there's a chest in the center of the ruins that will give us our second Smithing Stone 2 to get us to a plus 4 weapon. Make sure you get the map nearby which shows our next destination in the southwest, Fort Hate. There's a golden seed we can swipe while we're on horseback and we'll go ransack the sarcophagi to the southwest for some golden runes to help afford some of our stuff. Now, fast travel to the Summon Water Village outskirts side of Grace and follow the path east towards the red land on the map. This is Kaelid, and it's an area full of monsters that will wreck your ship right now and really don't give you enough runes to justify taking them on. This really isn't the place for you to be getting good. We'll follow the path past the bloody zombies and T-Rex dogs until it begins to bend south. From there, keep going east until you see the ravine. There's an area where the crumbled bridge will be jumping across on Torrent, then touch the side of Grace where the road forks. Now that we're in Dragon Barrow, take this road northwest all the way to the isolated merchant shack. This guy is going to set you up with some of the best early game items you'll come across now. If you don't have all the runes to get this guy's goodies, don't worry. There's a Newman rune at the tower in the distance that will easily snag with some careful platforming. Just follow my steps and you'll... Just follow my steps and... Just follow my steps and you'll secure the Newman rune. Climb up this ladder and take the left side. Here I would get on torrent and practice your dash to double jump timing. Once you get the rhythm down, get some speed, jump away from the tower around the statue then double jump back to the ledge on the other side. Congratulations, you made it through the most nerve wracking part of this expedition. Drop down here to the edge below, turn the corner, then walk carefully on this arcway. Go up the ladder on the other side and the Newman rune is in your grasp. At this point, you can fast travel back to the isolated merchant shack, sell the Newman rune, and pick up the Spike Sastus. I also HIGHLY recommend grabbing the Beast Repellent Torch. This torch is an absolute godsend throughout the entire game. Not only is this a reliable source of decent fire damage, but the most obnoxious, stun-locking enemies in this game tend to be the dogs and rats that will not attack you first while you wield this thing. This torch is basically an off button for beasts and the minor enemies that you'll run into later, just uh, well... Yeah, it's pretty good. Now I've marked a couple of other areas on this map where you can also get some other smithing stones and the drop rate forum in this newest patch seems to have been increased. You could pretty easily already have the smithing stone ones you need just by killing the enemies in the areas. However, I have marked a few spots where you can definitely go and pick up more than enough to get the Sasis totally stacked, and I would swap out the Ash of War here for Parry. But we'll be heading back to the safety of Limgrade to get some other optional items for this build. There's two talismans right here at the end that I would recommend. I, the first one is a little bit questionable because it seems like it just got buffed, but that still seems to be kind of up in the air. And the second one is a must if you can get it to trigger. First off, the Blue Dancer Charmed is obtained by beating the boss of High Road Cave here on the map. This talisman is the Flynn's Ring of this game if you played Dark Souls 3, so it increases your damage the lighter your equipment load is. The exact maximum of this increase appeared to be 15%, but as of the 1.03 update, it looks like the talisman is getting about 21.43% at an equip load around 5 before the 1.03 update, the exact maximum of this increase seemed to be about 15% at an equipment load of about 5, but as of right now, it appears that this has actually been buffed to about 21.43. People are still doing research on this one, but the increase in damage is something that we can't get out of another talisman with an easy reach, so I'd recommend keeping it on while your equipment load is in the single digits and nothing else objectively better is available. Like the next one I'm about to recommend. The Hammer Talisman is another one that would be incredible for this build if you can get it to reliably drop. Recusant Henricus and Limgrave seems to appear at either the Warmaster Shack or over at this Colosseum where I found them at. 
If you get this encounter to trigger and you get the talisman, this should probably be the one that you just keep on you. This one increases the stamina damage you deal to blocking creatures by 20%, which opens them up for crits if you stagger them. Those obnoxious enemies with tower shields that just will not allow you to get an opening in, if you just keep hitting them now, you will break that wall down. At this point, the build is basically done, and you're free to just go roam around and do whatever you want in the lands between. Your spike stasis should reliably be hemorrhaging at least once every single combat, and that jumping R2 is nasty about breaking stance. Anyways, the map for all this is down in the description below. I really appreciate you all for checking out my channel. If you're new here, I usually do a lot of D&D content, but I'm kind of splitting off and doing kind of whatever these days, so... Elden Ring has been my current obsession, and it's been fun to make videos like this. So anyways, if you're down for that kind of content, let me know if this build works out for you, subscribe and all that, much love to my Patreon sponsors, and now I'm off to go crush some faces and the lands between.